source documents. Source documents are basically the documents that uh, a business will issue or receive whenever they have a transaction. And remember, when we talk about a transaction here, we mean any activity that involves money. Whenever there is any activity that has been done in the business that is involving money, that particular activity is known as the transaction. And whenever a transaction has happened, there need to be an evidence that that particular transaction has actually occurred. The same way, if for example, you pay your school fees now, the school will issue with a receipt. And that receipt will be used as an evidence in the future to show that actually you have paid the school fees. And these documents that are normally prepared by the business or received by the business, they are all that we are talking about as the source documents. So a source document is evidence. It is an evidence that actually a transaction occurred. And whenever there is that proof that is needed, that particular document is going to be shown to show that actually the transaction happened. So source documents are simply the documents that are going to be either received or issued by the business. Having said that, we can uh, proceed and see examples of uh, the source documents that are going to be received or issued by the business. Number one, it is what we call sales invoice. A sales invoice, it is a source document that is normally issued to a customer when that particular customer has bought goods on a credit. The moment the goods have been sold to a customer and the customer has accepted that those goods have been received in a good condition, then the business will issue that particular customer with what we call an invoice. And the invoice that is normally issued by the business as a result of credit sales is what we call a sales invoice. So at this moment, I want you to understand one thing that a sales invoice will only be issued will only be issued by a business to the customers when goods have been sold on credit and then it is going to act as an evidence that that particular customer actually received goods from the business on credit terms so the word debtor here means a credit customer so anytime we are going to mention the word debtor which is also known as the accounts receivable, we simply mean or refer to that particular customer who bought goods from the business on credit terms. So all the credit sales that we made in a particular period, maybe it can be one week, for us to be able to know how much have we sold in credit, we shall go to the sales invoices that we have issued to the customer and we total them. And the total we are going to get there it is going to give us all the credit sales that we have made. So it is an evidence to show that actually goods have been sold to a particular customer on credit terms. The opposite of a sales invoice is what we refer as a purchases invoice. And a purchases invoice, it is also known as the incoming invoice. What we need to know about the invoice is that it is normally prepared by the seller it is normally prepared by the seller. So it is going to be incoming here because we are not the seller, we are the buyers because we purchased goods. Once we purchase those goods, the supplier from whom we bought the goods is going to prepare this particular invoice and send it to us once we have received those goods from that particular supplier. So a purchase invoice, it is normally sent by the credit supplier or the supplier who has given goods on credit to us requesting for the payment for those particular goods. So at any given period, we might be interested in knowing how much have we bought on credit. The value of the goods that we have bought on credit in a particular period, it is simply the sum of all the purchases invoices that we have received or the purchases invoices that we have received will give us the figure for all the credit purchases that we have made in a particular time period. 
Then we have got what we call the credit note. More often, you will realize that uh, a business might sell goods and after a while, the customer to whom we sold the goods returns some of those goods back to the business, either because they are not of the right quality that the customer had ordered, they have uh, maybe there is some breakages, they did not get delivered when they are in good condition, they are not on the right size, or any other reason that can make the customer not to be satisfied with those goods that have been uh, uh, sold to him or her. When that particular customer feels that these goods is, what, uh, is not what I ordered, then the customer will return those goods back to the business. Once the goods have been returned back to the business, the business is going to issue or to prepare a document we call mm. a credit note. A credit note is meant to correct an overcharge. An overcharge meaning that we received the goods from the supplier or we sold the goods to a customer. Once those goods were delivered to the customer, the business issued what we call an invoice. And the invoice was actually going to, uh, to capture everything that was delivered to the customer. The moment the customer has returned some of these goods back to the business, then it simply means that the invoice that we had initially issued to him or her, it is not a correct invoice. Or the amount of money that you are requesting this particular customer to pay, to pay, it is not actually the right amount because part of the goods that the customer was charged has been or have been returned back to the business. So we need to prepare what we call a credit note, which is normally prepared to correct an overcharge for the goods that have been returned so that we can reduce the amount that we had initially indicated in our invoice. So it is a document that is normally prepared and sent to the customer in response to the goods that have been returned back to the, the, to the business by that particular debtor. Or in short, to reduce the value or the amount that is captured in the invoice that uh, was initially shared to that particular customer. Then we have got what we call a debit note. A debit note now is going to be issued by the supplier. The supplier of the goods, once the goods that were sold to us have been returned back to the supplier, then the supplier will prepare a debit note also to reduce the amount that we are supposed to pay to that particular supplier. Another source document is now what we call a receipt. Receipt is normally issued whenever money is uh, changing hands. When you are paying for something, then you must be issued a receipt. Either we have uh, paid our supplier, the supplier will give us a receipt, or a customer has paid us a certain amount of money. So us as the business owner, we are going to issue that particular supplier with a receipt. So a receipt, it is when either money or a check has been received or issued in a business. Then we have got another source document we call a check. Checks, in most cases, they have there. That a small part, once you tear the, the check, there's that part that remains, which has the same information as the check itself. So that particular part is also going to act as, an, uh, as a source document or as a proof. And remember, a check is normally issued by a business that operates a bank account. In that case, we can make some payments through the check so that it is going to reduce our money in the bank, or we can receive some checks from the customers which are going to increase our bank balance in the bank. And then at the end of the day, we can be able to know how many checks did we receive and how many checks have we issued, and then we can be able to know our balance that uh, we have in our bank account. Then we have got what we call the petty cash vouchers. It is normally issued by what we call a petty cashier. When a business has undertaken what we call trivial or petty transaction in the business. And these are the transactions that are very numerous in the business because they take place 
uh, in day to day and also they don't involve a, a large amount of money a good example of these things are the staff tea expenses we have got some transport fees whereby some people are sent to deliver some things in the offices such kind of uh, small transactions but are very repetitive eh? such kind of transactions they are actually uh, proved to have occurred through what we call the petty cash voucher and this is actually the voucher prepared by the petty cash and it is signed by the recipient of that particular amount of money to confirm that in a particular day that particular amount was spent for that particular purpose as indicated in the voucher as indicated in the voucher then we have got what we call the delivery note and a delivery note is a document that is normally sent together with the goods or a document that is going to be packed together with the goods and it has got the details for those particular goods which are being delivered so it is going to act maybe as a checklist of what has been delivered so that you take the delivery note and then you confirm anything that is on the delivery note whether it was actually delivered so it, if it is written maybe 10 packets of item x you confirm whether there are 10 packets and whether they are of the right quantity and then you can be able to confirm to the seller that those goods have been safely and correctly received as indicated on the delivery note which now would be used in preparing the invoice for that particular consignment up to that point i can pause and maybe get some one or two questions before we proceed marimo i have a small question yes please how do you treat um this mpesa sort of receipt note because i think it's a form of is it a form of a receipt or something if you pay something by using mpesa yeah you get back the the whatever there's a statement that you get back is it a source the document as well oh uh -huh. the mpesa statement that you will get at the end of the period no 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 the sms message that you get back that you when you back, make, huh? make a transaction yes for example if you are buying goods in a supermarket yes you use the yes. bay bill yes but then you get a message saying that you paid acknowledging the receipt of some money yes how do you do that i can say actually it is a source document huh? because it's a okay. problem, huh? and in most cases huh, you will find that once you have paid for those particular goods if the person is not close to the phone eh, he will just ask you to show the message eh? And that message becomes an evidence that that particular actually transaction has uh, taken place. Mm -hmm. It is only that uh, it has not been documented in books, but I can comfortably say that uh, it can be a source document or it is a source document because actually it is being used as a proof that a transaction has uh, actually taken place. That's a very good question. So Malimu, just to add to what Abram has asked. So in other words, we are not just looking at documents in terms of just the physical, but uh, even the digital uh, documentation as yes. with the MPESA uh, would work as a source document. Actually, uh, actually okay. yes. Another question, Mwalimu. Yes. If, uh, if, 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 if those transactions are done digitally, yes. I believe, and it's done directly to the bank account of the company, yes. then I believe uh, during the statement reconciliation that finance does there will be a message there something like that that one can also be evidence of payment right true, true. Okay. anything that is actually banked at the end of the period we can ask for the bank statement eh? and the bank statement is going to show how that money was received and all that and from that particular bank statement we can now go ahead and prepare a bank reconciliation statement which now will make it to be in agreement with the cash book. And I know it is one of the topics that we are going to cover. Oh. And we are going to talk about it in details when we get there. Thank you. Karibu. OK. Those are the source documents. So having talked about the source documents now, we can go to what we call the books of original entry. 
the books of original entry, they have quite a number of uh, names that we can refer to, which are actually meaning the same thing. They are also known as the books of prime entry. They can be called the subsidiary books, the journals, the day books. Even sometimes they are known as the diaries. And these are uh, simply the documents or statements where transactions are first entered. The transactions are first entered in the books of original entry before they are transferred to what we call the journals or ledgers. So the books of original entry, they are books where transactions are originally entered before they are now transferred to the ledgers. From the ledgers, we get the, the other statements that we shall use in preparing the final statement of a business. So they are the original books. They are the original books because that is where the transactions were first entered. And uh, the next slide, we are going to see what are these books of original entry that we are referring to. So the books of original entry, number one, we have got what we call the sales journal or the sales day book. The sales journal, it is going to be used to record credit sales, only, only the credit sales. Anything that has been sold on credit will be captured in the sales journal. And uh, at that point, you will also realize that uh, any book of original entry has got a source document. And a source document here we mean it is a document that is going to give us information that we require in preparing this book of original entry. So the source document for a sales journal is what we referred as the sales invoices. We just go through the copies of the sales invoices that were left in the business, and we can be able to use those copies in preparing the sales journal. So we can be able to know that on this and this date, we sold goods to James of 5,000, on this date, we sold goods to Maria of 2,500. And then we use that information in the sales invoices to come up with the sales journal. So the source document for the sales journal is actually the sales invoice. Then we have got uh, another book of original entry, which is the purchases journal. The purchases journal, it is meant to record all those goods that have been purchased or bought on credit terms. So in that particular journal, we are going to record the names of the suppliers from whom we bought goods on credit. The names of all the suppliers that gave goods on credit are going to be captured in what we are referring as the purchases journal. And what we normally use in preparing the purchases journal or what I can call the source document, the source document is normally the purchases invoice. Those invoices that we receive or the incoming invoices, they are going to be our source document. So we shall go to those invoices that we have received and then we go through them one by one. And then from those invoices, we prepare our purchases journal. The next type of a journal is known as the return in once, also known as the sales returns journal. This is a journal that is used to record items that were initially sold, but have been returned back to the business by the customers. They were sold, but now they have been returned back to the business by the customer. That particular journal is known as the return in once or the sales returns journal. And here you will find that each source document is actually the credit note. Remember we said the credit note is normally issued when goods have been returned back. So all the copies or the carbon copies of the credit notes that we issued our customers who returned goods, they are going to assist us in preparing what we call the sales journal. Will assist us in actually preparing that particular journal. And then we have got what we call the return outwards journal or the purchases journal. This journal is going to record all those goods that we bought from the suppliers 
but because of one reason or the other, we returned those goods to those same suppliers. So once we buy goods from maybe Upendo suppliers, and then at a later date, we return them back to Upendo, the goods that we have returned back to Upendo, they are known as the purchases returns because we had initially purchased them, but now we are returning. And the source document for that case is the incoming. The credit note is normally prepared by the seller. Eh? And therefore, because the seller is the supplier, is going to issue with us or to issue us with the credit note once we return those goods to them. And those credit notes that we are receiving from the suppliers are what we are referring as the incoming credit notes in the business. Maybe I will uh, give you a comment for those particular four documents. That is the sales journal, the purchases journal, the return inwards journal, and the return outward journal. Let me see. Have we lost you, Malimu, or it's on my end? I can hear you. Oh, yeah. Are you still there? Because the presentation I, has I've, dropped on my end. So. I, I was actually doing, um, I want to, to share something else. So I have stopped sharing whatever I was sharing so that I can share something else, but I'm still on. OK, thank you. OK. So, so I wanted to share this screen so that I can be able to demonstrate how do we prepare those uh, four source documents. That is the sales journal, the purchases journal, and uh, there are returns. That is sales returns and the purchases returns. So it is a very simple statement. Like, for example, for the sales journal, just a minute. For the sales journal, we normally have uh, a column for the date. The next column is to record the details, and then we are going to record the amount. So, it is going to be a document similar to this. So, like for example, on 1st January, this is maybe the year 2020, uh, we sold goods on a credit to John. So you just write here, 2020, January 1. You write here the name of the customer, who is John. And maybe we sold goods of uh, worth 1,500 to him, like that. So that is the amount. Maybe on that of that particular month, on that, we sold goods to Kim was 2000 so we come here we write the date which is that we sold it to kim and then the amount so the details here it captures the name of the customer maybe on fifth we sold goods to joyce you come here and you say joyce and then you write the value of the goods that we sold to her maybe it is 2500 so it is a very simple statement you go and maybe on eighth from the invoice that you have we sold the goods maybe to Fatuma. You come here, you write the name of the customer who is Fatuma, and maybe it was 1800, like that. So on the details, we write the name of the customer. And these customers who bought goods on credit from the business, we collectively call them the debtors. So in the sales journal, we are going to have the name of the debtors who are simply the credit customers. 
For the other journal, which is the purchases journal, it is going to be prepared the same way. The purchases journal. We are going to have the date of the transaction, the details, and then the amount. So, because we are purchasing, the details now will contain the names of the supplier, the person from whom we bought those goods. Maybe on uh, the same 2020, maybe this is January now, fourth, we bought goods from Utari. Utali wholesalers, you come right there, Utali, maybe they were worth 8,700. On maybe nine, we also bought goods on credit from maybe Ujama. Worth 5,500, you write there like that, like that, like that. So the key thing for the purchases journal and the sales journal, these items must be acquired on credit. If they are in cash, we don't record them here. Similarly, when we go to the sales journal, anything we correct, we record here, it must be goods that were bought on credit. If they were, sorry, they, was, they must have been sold on credit. If they were sold on cash, we don't record them here. Because once goods have been sold in cash, we don't have any other obligation with that particular customer we only get interested to follow up a customer who bought goods on credit. So that is what you need to note. When it comes to their returns, that is the sales returns and purchases returns, the same approach is going to be followed. So we are going to have the sales uh, returns journal the sales returns journal with the columns, the date, the details, and amount. So for it to be a sales returns, first of all, the customer must first of all have been bought goods. So the sales returns will contain the names of these people who are in the sales journal. Maybe on seven, John returned goods of 1500 on 7th John returned because you cannot return goods if you did not buy them. Eh? So first of all, those goods must have been sold for them now to be returned back to be considered as sales returns. So you will come here and write on 2020. This is January 7th. There is a, a customer by the name John returning goods and the value of goods that are being returned is 500. So maybe on a nine, Kim, Kim returns goods of 300. So you return the value of those goods which have been returned by the customers who had initially bought them on credit. Then for the purchases returns, Purchases, returns. It is the same format, the date, the details, and uh, we have the amount. So, what you are going to have, or the names that you are going to capture here in the details column, they must be these people which we had initially purchased from. We must have these names. Huh? We purchased goods from Utari. So if we return those goods to Utari, then those goods are going to be considered as purchases returns. The same case, we bought goods from Ujama. Once we return them to Ujama, they are now going to be known as the uh, the purchases returns or returned outwards. So you can find here maybe it is on 10th. Let me say January 10th, we returned goods to Utali, Utali suppliers, and the goods we returned maybe they were worth 900. 
on maybe January 13th, we returned goods to Ujama. And maybe the goods we returned, they are worth 1,200. We just capture them like that. And then whatever you will come up with is going to be your journal. It is going to be your journal. So at the end of the day, you are going to add this to get the total purchases returns. You add this plus this, you get one. It is going to be 2,100. This is the total purchases returns for that particular period that you are considering. For this case, we have the sales returns. You add this and that. You find that in that particular period, maybe it was uh, the first two weeks, this was the total sales returns. Then we go to the purchases journal. You add that so that you can get the total purchases or the total credit purchases because all of them are on credit. You find that maybe this one is what? This is uh, 13, it's going to be around 14, 14,200, eh? if I'm not wrong. You do the same to the sales journal. You add all this so that you can get the total credit sales because all these items were sold on credit. And that is how we simply prepare those four journals. So the four journals, they simply talk about the buying and the selling of goods. And the underlying factor here, those goods must be, or those items must be goods. And what do we know about goods or what are goods? Goods are those items that we are buying with the intention of selling. Anything the business is actually buying with the intention of selling is going to be called goods. And in short, this is what we normally refer as stock the stock items, huh? the things that your business is dealing with. When you buy them on credit, you record them in the purchases. When you sell them on credit, you record them in the sales journal. When they are sold and they are returned back to the custom, by the customers, you record them in the sales returns. When we buy them and at some point we return them, they are known as the purchases returns, and we record them in the purchases returns journal. So the key thing, they must be goods. And the other factor is that they must be on credit. They must be on credit. If they are in cash, you don't record them here. They are going to go to another book of original entry that we are going to talk about known as the cash book, if they are bought on cash basis. Any question up to that point? Okay, I hope it is well understood. Uh, we have talked about the four books of original entry, sales purchases, sales returns, purchases returns. Now we can uh, move on. The other book of original entry is what we call the cash book. And the cash book, it is actually a ledger, and we normally call it also a book of original entry. So far, we have talked about credit transactions. When we sell goods on credit, when we buy goods on credit, when we do that, everything on credit. Somebody might wonder, what about if we sell them in cash or we buy goods using cash? And when I'm talking about cash here, I mean the cash in hand or we might use checks referring to the money in the bank. So if any transaction has been conducted in the business and it involves either cash in hand or cash at bank, such kind of a transaction is going to be recorded in what we call the cash book. So a cash book, it is simply a book of original entry where all those cash transactions are normally posted. They are going to be posted there before they are transferred into their respective ledger accounts. So anything talking about checks that have been received and cash that has been received, equally checks that have been issued or paid out 
and cash that has been paid out, all those transactions are going to be captured in the cash book. And the cash book, actually, we have got four types. We have got four types of cash books. We have got four types of cash books. And uh, the four types of cash books, we are going to discuss them right now. The first one is what we call the single column cash book or one column cash book. This is actually the simplest of them, whereby transactions involving cash in hand and those transactions involving cash at bank, they are recorded separately. They are recorded separately. They are not recorded in one single cash book. We have got a cash book to record the cash received and cash payments. We also have a separate cash book to record checks received and checks issued out. When we have them uh, separately maintained, then that kind of a cash book is known as the single column cash book. We can actually go ahead and now condense these two uh, single column cash books. We condense them so that we can have one cash book. And when the checks and the cash is recorded in one cash book, that cash book is known as the two column cash book. So a two column cash book, it's a cash book where the cash received and cash payments together with checks received and check payments are all recorded in one single cash book. So we are going to have two columns for recording cash and bank in one cash book. Then last, uh, the third one is the three column cash book. And the three column cash book is meant to record three items. The cash, that is cash received or paid, checks, that is the checks received or paid, and the discount, that is the discount received or discount allowed. So we are going to talk about three things, and that's why it is known as the three column cash book. We talk about discounts there, we talk about cash, and we also talk about bank. So on the debit side or on the left hand side, we are going to talk about the cash received, checks received, and the discount that we have allowed those customers who are paying us. On the other side, we are going to have the checks paid, cash paid, and the discount we have uh, received from those people we have paid. And lastly, we have got what we call the petty, the petty cash book that is meant to record petty transactions. I think at this particular point again, we need to demonstrate how it is normally done. So for the one column cash book, I am not going to talk about right now because when you go to the ledger accounts, it is going to be extensively be used. And uh, when we shall be preparing the ledger accounts, I will find that time to really explain to you that particular kind of a cash book. And uh, you will get to understand how it is prepared. Our interest is on the two and the three column cash book. And uh, I think for those, I don't know whether we have got uh, our revision papers. I don't know whether we have got our revision papers. Let me locate mine. <laughs>
anybody with his or her vision paper? I have mine. Uh, yes. I have it. Yeah. But some I know they don't have. I have it. Just a minute. I've not actually located mine, but uh, I'm almost. Where do we find the revision papers? Are they on the LMS? They posted on the LMS? Okay. Shared on the WhatsApp group. Oh, the that's class. before some of us joined. So, so it's on the LMS because I can't see them on the LMS as well. So, sorry. No, I was just wondering where the revision papers are posted on the LMS, but I can't see them on the LMS. Maybe I'm looking at the. Actually, there's an icon for that. But uh, alternatively, mm. alternatively, are you in our WhatsApp group? Yes. I had shared them, but uh, if maybe you have just joined, I will share them again so that you can get them there. Yeah? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. Let me just look for a question that. Uh, So for those with the papers, I want you to go to June 2018, June 2018, question 4A, question 4A. Those without, we are going to read for you. Question 4A, June 2018, question 4A. Are you there? Yes. Yes, June 2018, question 4A. The question says that the following information was obtained from the books of Thomas for the month of January 2018. The information was obtained from the books of Thomas for the month of January 2018. So we are given all the transactions that happened in that month. And what we were required to do is to prepare Thomas two column cash book for the month of January 2018. So two column cash book, it has the following format. We normally have the column for the date, details, a column to record the cash, a column to record the bank or the checks. That is one side. Then we repeat the same columns on the other side, the date, the details, a column to record the cash, and a column to record the checks or the bank. So from where we have the date repeated, let me just spin it. That is like our middle point. We normally separate it with double lines. So we have the date, the details, 
cash and bank. So we also have the same columns on the left hand side. And then So from where we have the double lines to the left hand side, we normally call that side debit. And it is used to record any cash that is received. We call it the receipt side. From the double lines to the right, we normally call that particular side credit. And it is meant to record the payments, the cash payments. So on this side, we record the cash received. On this side, we record the cash paid. So if it is paid by cash, we record it here. If it is paid by check, we record it from the bank. If we receive cash, we put it in the cash column of the debit. If we receive checks, we put them on the bank column on the debit side. So the first transaction says that started business with a capital in bank 10,000 and the cash 20,000. So that is money the business is receiving from the owner in form of capital. So it is a receipt to the business. It is not a payment. So because it is a receipt, we shall come here and we say, let me say this is 2018, Jan 1, January 1, the business received the capital and the cash was 10,000 and the bank was 20,000. So the cash amount, the cash amount, we put it in the cash column. The bank amount, we put it in the bank column, but both of them on the receipt side. Then the 2nd January, this is January 2nd, his friend John lent him 5,000 shillings. So if I can ask the class, if the friend lend this particular owner, Thomas, 5,000, is it a receipt or is it a payment? I think it's a receipt. Yes, the business is receiving. So on second, we received the money or the Thomas received the money from John. And this money came in as cash, so we put it in the cash column. You write here the amount, 5,000. On that, no. paid rent, 3,000. Paid rent, that is a payment. So you come here and you say 2018, January 3, we paid rent. So here you write where the money is going. And this rent was paid by check. So we record it on the bank column, 3,000 like that. On fourth, cash sales, 1,000 was paid directly to bank. Cash sales worth 1,000 and was paid directly to the bank. So first of all, when you sell goods, you receive money. So it is a receipt. But now, are we going to record it in the cash column? or are we going to record it in the bank column? Look here, it was cash sales worth a thousand, which was paid directly into the bank. Who can tell me or who can try? Where are we going to record this entry? I think we will record it on the bank column. Exactly. We are going to record it in the bank column because that money did not remain in cash. We sold them, we received the cash, and that 1,000, we did not deposit it in the cash box. We immediately took it to the bank. So it went to the bank, and it was uh, not actually settled in the cash box. So you come here, and you say on fourth, you just write here sales, and you put it on the bank, because that is where it was taken. You put it into the bank. On fifth, Paris adapter paid him 2,000. Remember, adapter is a credit customer. So a credit customer by the name Paris paid Thomas 2,000. So to Thomas, that is a receipt. 
It is a receipt from uh, Paris. It is a receipt from Paris. So you just write it there. Paris paid 2000 by check. So it is going to increase the bank balance. So we put it in the bank. And then on six, he paid the motor vehicle expenses. He paid the motor vehicle expenses. So that is a payment. So that is a payment. We just say uh, motor expenses, motor expenses. And these motor expenses, they were 1,000 and they were paid by cash. So we put them in the cash column like that. Then on seven, we repaid John 4,000. Remember we had borrowed 5,000 from John. Now we are paying John. So it's going to be recorded on the payment side. So this is on seven, we paid John. And we paid 4,000 by cash. So we put it on the cash column. On eighth, he took 2,000 out of cash box and paid it into the bank account. We took money from cash and we transferred it to the bank. Such kind of a transaction is known as a contra entry. It is known as a contra entry. A contra entry, it is a transaction where money is not received into the business or it is not paid out of the business, but changing the destination within the business. We are changing it from cash to the bank or we are transferring cash to the bank or we are transferring money from the bank to cash such kind of a transaction is known as a contra entry as a business we have not received any money and we have not paid out any money so money has only changed the destination eh, within the business so it is going to affect both sides it is going to affect both the payment side and the receipt side at the same time so you need to come here and note we took 2000 out of cash and paid it into the bank account so the bank account is the one that is receiving this money so on the receipt side we record 2000 in the bank because it is the one that is receiving and here we record it is coming from cash it is coming from cash this is on eighth you record it on the bank column because it is the one that is receiving and here you record where the money is coming from actually the details of the receipt side records where the money is coming from the money is coming from john the money is coming from sales the money is coming from paris the money is coming from cash and here we normally record where the money is going or what we are paying we are paying rent we are paying motor expenses we are paying john eh? So you normally record where the money is going. So on the same day, which is on 8th, cash is reducing by 2,000 and that money is going to the bank. That money is going to the bank. You put it into bracket C to mean it is a contra entry. So it is going to be on 8th here and 8th here. Here we record it on cash because cash is the one that is paying or reducing. Here we record it on the bank because the bank is the one that is receiving the same amount. So it is known as a contra entry, known as a contra entry. On the ninth, we bought furniture worth 1,000 and paid by check. So that is a payment when you are buying, you are spending money. You put here on ninth, you write here furniture. We bought furniture of 1,000 by check so we put it in the bank column. Then on 15, paid insurance premium, paid business insurance premium, 1,000 by cash. That is a payment again. We put here on 15, we paid insurance of 1,000 by cash. Then on 20th, we withdrew 2,000 cash from bank for business use. Whenever you find there is that term business use, or sometimes they normally use the word office use, that is money that is taken from the bank to cash. 
we don't record them as business use. They are actually amount that is taken from cash to bank and it is also a contra entry. It is also a contra entry because money is taken from the bank to the business cash for use. So it is a contra entry because the business is not losing any money. It is not receiving any money. It is only that we are changing the money that we had from the bank and we take it to cash. So it is a contra entry. So what we need to ask ourselves, which one is receiving? Is it cash or bank? With the due 2000 cash from bank for business. So for business here, we have said that money is taken to cash. So cash is the one that is receiving 2000. We put it in the cash column and the money is coming from the bank. You put C, yeah? there is a C here. This is on a 20th. The same 20th, you come here and you say that bank is actually reducing by 2000 and the money is going to the cash. Like that, contra entry. And lastly, paid wages in cash. That is a payment that is on 30th. You just come here and record wages of 4,000 cash, 4,000 cash. So you put it in the cash column. And that is how you are supposed to prepare your two column cash book. It is a two column cash book because each side we have got two columns. That is the cash and the bank transaction. After you have posited all those particular transactions in the cash book, the question will require you also to do what we call the balancing. You will be required to do the balancing. And the balancing, what you do is this. You add the cash of the debit side and the cash of the credit side and get the totals. Like here, the cash that we have on the debit side, it is 15, 17,000, eh? meaning that we received a total of 17,000. And how much did we spend? We spend, this is five, seven, uh, eight, 12,000. We received 17, we spent 12. So there is a balance of 5,000. If we received 17 and we have spent 12, we have a balance of 5,000. And we normally- Sorry. If yeah. I may interrupt. When you look at uh, the first uh, transaction on Thomas' uh, book, yes. it says mm. with a capital in bank, in bank is 10,000 and cash is 20,000. Oh, I think I interchanged. Eh? Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for noting that. Eh? Thank you for noting that. Actually, thank you very much. I did interchange them here. So for cash, it is the one that is 20,000. And for bank, it is 10,000. So thank you for noting that. So the total cash that we received as a business is 25, 27. Eh? We received 27, but we paid out, this is five, seven. Uh, this is actually 12,000. So we received 27, we paid. Uh, 12. Lord, what is the difference now? How much do we have as the balance? 27 minus 12. We are 15,000. 15,000. That one we normally call it balance. Huh? Balance carried down. We normally use C stroke D. Balance carried down of 15,000. So if we put 15,000 there, then the two sides will have 27,000. And this side will also have 27, sorry, the cash column, 27,000. So we have balanced the cash columns. So we have 27,000, here we have 27,000. So the figure that we have inserted here so that the two sides can be equal is the balance that we have. We do the same thing when uh, we go to the, uh, the bank. The total bank 
amount that we received was this is 15,000, 10 plus 5, 15,000. And then we spent or we paid, uh, this is uh, 6,000. So if we received 15,000 and we have paid 6,000, it means that there is a balance of 9,000. So this 9,000 should be in the same horizontal line with this balance of 15,000 in cash. So that now here we can have 15,000. And this side we are going to have 15,000. And we have balanced our cash book. One thing you will note that when we go to the next period, this one will be our starting balance. We normally call it balance brought down. The starting balance, cash we had 15,000. And the other one, the other one, sorry, I've just gone to my. The other one is 9,000. And that is your two column cash book. That is your two column cash book. Any question as far as the two column cash book is concerned? Anybody with a question? Yes, 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 Malim, I have a small question, yeah? Yes. Yes, ask. Hello? Hello, I have a small question. Yes, please ask. Yeah, how do you treat electronic cash transfers or even this Mpesa transfers that I talked about earlier? Is it treated as cash? Because it hits the bank account immediately. How uh -huh. do you treat it in this? Do you treat it as cash or bank? So if, for example, they were done in the business, huh? maybe you mm -hmm. are in the business, uh, that is the shop, huh? the customer comes, he buys the item and then he pays for that particular item on uh, uh, through the MPS. Eh? We normally assume actually it is on cash basis. We normally assume it is the cash basis eh? because we cannot record it as a bank because if we go to the bank, that amount of money is not there. It is in the business uh, through that particular maybe MPS. Eh? We cannot con anything that we talk about bank, it is anything that uh, we can actually go to the bank and either find it to be a withdrawal or a deposit. Eh? If it is not in the bank, then we consider it to be a cash transaction. Because actually the business owner can be able to change that money from uh, the MPESA into cash. Unless that money is paid through the pay bill, eh? It is paid through the pay bill, and we have got these pay bills where money is transferred direct to the bank. If it is paid directly to the bank, like for example, equity, we have 24 7, 24 7, and then the account is the account number of that particular person, then we can record it as money received in the bank account. Is it okay, thank you. Is it coming out clearly? Yeah, it's very clear. Thank you. Okay. okay. Okay, that is uh, how we do the two column cash book. It is very simple. Any transaction that you read, uh, you need to interpret it. Eh? First of all, is it uh, money received or is it money paid? You find it out, maybe it is received. If it is received, is it by cash or by, 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 uh, by check? If it is cash, you record it on the receipt cash column. If it is received by check, you record it as received in the bank column. If it is a payment, you also do the same way. And then you record them like that. One thing I want uh, to remind you is that in the cash book, we don't record anything on credit. More often, you can find that a transaction of credit nature is involved in the question. You can find that maybe it was on date 10, 
and then you are told sold goods on credit to John, 4,000 shillings. On that 10th, you will not record anything in the cash book because there was no cash or check that was received in that particular date. You just skip that transaction. You just skip that transaction. Maybe you'll go up to date 17 and then you are told John paid his account by check. At that point now you will record because money has been received but at the date of a credit sale don't record anything at the date of payment now you record it because money has been received so a cash book is purely meant for cash transactions and nothing on credit if it is on credit you omit it until the date that amount is going to be paid okay that is on the two column cash book. Let me see whether we have got the three column cash book. I want you to have a look at uh, June 2019, June 2019, question 2A, June Are you there? Yes. 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 Okay. If you are there, that is good. Let me draw that. Huh? For the three column cash book, it's going to have the columns for the date, details. On this, we are going to have what we call the discount allowed discount allowed and then we shall have the cash and the bank then we are going to have the same columns on the other side the date the details but in this time we are going to talk about the discount received and then the cash lastly we shall have the bank so from where we have the next date, just a minute. So we still have our payment side, which is our credit side denoted as CR. We have our receipt side, normally known as the DR, like that. So this is not a business that is starting. It is a business that is got continuing. And we are told that Marcus traders had the following balances as at 1st November 2018. So this is a business that is moving, eh? moving on. Eh? It is not starting on this November. So the balances for the bank, we are told it is 25,000, but credit CR. Because it is CR, we come here and we record it on the CR. We shall come and capture this is on the date. 
um, 1st November. This is 2018. You just write here November 1. You write balance brought down. Brought down means opening balance. For cash, uh, sorry, bank, it is the one that is on credit. You put it here, 25,000. A credit bank balance means an overdraft. It simply means that in the bank we have a negative balance of 25,000, which is the same as the overdraft. But for the cash, it cannot be negative. So this is 2018, November 1. You also write here balance, brought down. You put here on the column of cash, 61,000. 61,000, it is a debit balance. You put it on the debit side. So that is how you record these balances. But if for the bank was debit, we could have recorded here. But now we are told it's credit, you put it here. So for the bank, it can either be debit or credit. So you need to be very careful as you capture it. Then the following transactions took place. Number one, made sales at 70,000 and was paid by check. Sales means money being received. So you come here and you say on that, you just write here, sales, and it was 870,000 shillings by check. So you write here, 870,000 shillings. On that again, paid salaries by check. You come here, that is a payment. Salaries is a payment. Salaries, 150,000 by check. So you write here, 150,000. On November 4th, cash sales, 57. That is on 4th. You could just come here, you write sales, but they were made by cash, 57,000. Then on 12th, John Adepta paid 188,000 after deducting a cash discount of 6%. That statement is very powerful we need to know what was the amount of discount. John, the amount that was paid is 188,000. And then John had deducted 6%. John had deducted 6%. Already the, the discount is deducted. So if a discount, if a discount is the same as 6%, and this is what John paid, then John paid 94%. If there was no discount that was given to John, this particular person could have paid 100%. If a discount of 6% has been deducted, the key thing here is after deducting. So it has already been deducted. So if 94% is the same as 188,000, what about the 6% that was deducted? So 6%, is going to be 6% times 188,000. Then we divide by 94%. Percent. percent and percent will cancel out. So our answer here will be in shillings. So somebody with a calculator to do that multiplication, 6 times 188, then you divide by 94. Somebody? Six times 188,000. Then the answer you get, you divide by 94. I have 12,000 as my answer. 12,000. <laughs> Let us say that is correct. So this is the discount. Eh? This is the discount that uh, John deducted. So when you're recording it, you come here and you say, Actually, it is on uh, date 12. John Adepta. Adepta, remember, is a customer, and a customer will always pay the business. So we normally receive money from the customers. Eh? You just come here and you say on 12, we receive the money from John. John, we gave him a discount of 12,000. Eh? And the amount of money he paid <laughs> is 188,000. <laughs> So you record here 188,000. 
Wow. So, 12,000 is the discount, and the 188,000, this is what was actually received. This is what was actually received. So, if this is what was received, we cannot deduct again the discount. We compute the 6% that was deducted initially. On 15, paid edger traders to 20,000 and deducted cash of 5%. So the question I can pose to the class, has discount been deducted or not? Does not. It has not been deducted. It has not been deducted. Huh? So yeah. you will know the discount has been deducted when they use after deducting or after having deducted. Huh? So if they use two word, those words, the discount has been deducted. But they, if they say less 6% or deducting 6%, it has not been deducted. So we need to come here and you say, we need to calculate 5% of 220,000. This is now the direct way. 5% of this one would be what? What is 5 times 2200? 5 times 2200? It's 11,000. 11,000. Eh? That is uh, actually we paid. We paid. This is on uh, 15. We paid EJA. A discount we received was 11,000. So what is 220,000 minus 11,000? So 20,000 minus 11,000. Is it 209? 209,000 and... Uh, 9. 209. 209,000. And uh, on uh, 18, Sarim paid 150,000 cash and was allowed a cash discount of 6%. In the same case, the discount has not been deducted. So the amount that was supposed to be received from Sarim is 150,000, and uh, we allowed a discount of 6%. So you need to calculate the 6% of 156 over 100 times 150,000. How much do you get? 9,000. 9,000. So we allowed Sarim 9,000 discount. So this is on uh, 18. Eh? We received the money from Sarim. Uh, a discount of 9,000 was allowed. And uh, if he was supposed to pay 150,000, he will pay 141. He will pay 141. And lastly, on 25th, we paid, a pass, uh, we paid electricity. We paid electricity by cash, 24,000. Sorry, cash is here, 24,000. And that is now the posting. Eh? Then from there, you go and balance them. You go and balance them. You need to note this. With the discounts, we don't balance them. Eh? With the discounts, they are not similar. You just add this one and you say this one is 21,000, the total discount that was allowed. The total discount that was received is 11,000. You don't balance them. Eh? But for cash, you need to add this cash, then you less this cash, so that now you can be able to get the balance. You add this cash, you minus this cash. The difference is what we call the balance carried down. You put it here so that these totals can be the same the same case to the bank. Add this total minus that total, get the balance and you are done. I want to finish at that point class unless somebody has got a question. Thank you, Malimu. I have a question. Yes. 
Uh, sorry, I joined uh, in late and I have found that you've done the two column is it cash book and the three column. What did you say are the differences between the two? The two column cash books are just having the discount columns. Huh? It only have the date details, cash and bank. Huh? The date details, cash and bank. It does not have the discounts. But with the three columns, it has the discounts. And actually, that is what makes it to be to have three columns, because each side has got three columns for recording the amount. But for the two column cash book, as we have here, just let me locate it. The two column cash book, as we have it here, it is actually the date details cash bank. Eh? Date details cash bank. So when you are told to prepare the two column cash book, you will not be given any information to do with the discounts. But when you are given information to prepare the three column cash book, then you must have information, some information talking about the discounts. That is the difference. Okay, thank you. And is there somewhere I can get this explanation? Maybe the demonstration from our notes. The demonstration. So if you go first, can of I, can I... the LMS, huh? the yes. LMS I, I have shared a video there. At the same time, I'm also going to share this video. Uh, what thank you, Mother. Thank you. Anybody else? Molimo, hello Molimo. Yes. Just just a comment, eh? Because of the enterprise management systems that we have nowadays, I believe, of course, these are yes. managed electronically nowadays. Uh -huh. So just just that, so that uh, it may not be as physical as, as it is now. It is moving to an electronic version, but it remains the same, I guess. The principle remains the same. Yes, yes. Actually, I know the enterprise uh, those are actually the digital eh? it is yes. actually whatever we have here but now they are doing it electronically eh? they are uh, trying to make the work easier they feed the information and then it generates eh? yes Have I answered you or it was just a comment? Huh? No, it was a comment. It was a oh, comment. Thanks. Okay, okay, okay. Do we have anybody maybe who wants to make a comment or ask a question? Okay. If there is no question, I beg to end the class at that point. I will share the video on the WhatsApp. So uh, hey. Kadipo, I just I've seen you have shared your number. Anybody who is not in the group, just check with the Kadipo. The number is on the chats. Mwalimu, mine is a comment now outside today's topic, just on the LMS. Yes. Um, I realized there's some videos that were posted earlier in topic, I think two. Yes. Um, but then they they don't display, I think they're in um a Google Drive. So I don't know if those that is what everyone else experienced or do, do I need to be added to be able to access? Actually, I saw that video and I said I was to, to do an adjustment or upload it afresh, but it's like I forgot. I'm going to do it and then probably tomorrow you can be able to try and see. It will be okay. working. Yes, yes. So the ones in topic one and uh, yeah, there are two videos I think under topic one. Those are the ones that take you through a Google Drive. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay very good. Okay then, let's stop there. Uh, thank you very much for coming on board. We shall do it again in next week. Let me wish you a very blessed week and also a very good night. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank good you, night Malibu. and blessed good week night. to Malibu. Malibu. Thank you, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.